Samsung just released update 1460 for the QLED 2020 TVs. What did they add and what did they fix, if anything at all? In this video, we're going to check that out as well as perform a couple of tests. So make sure you stay tuned. Let's get into it. How's it going everybody? My name is Produced by KG. On this channel, you will find videos on TVs, tech, video games, and much more. So if you like any of those things, make sure you hit the subscribe button below. And if you have any comments or questions for me, leave those as well. All right, before we get into anything else, I just want to introduce the question of the day. What TV do you guys own right now? And what is your biggest issue with it? Let me know the answer in the comments below. Let's talk about what is going on with Samsung and these firmware updates. I want to get into a few things off of the bat. And I want to tell you that for me, I didn't have a lot of issues going into this update. But weirdly enough, I did have issues after the update. Specifically issues with the Xbox Series X and the Q90T. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. And while I wasn't experiencing issues prior to the update, a lot of users were. And that's something that kind of let me down with the last update. One specific note on this update is that the update won't be available on your TV directly for a couple of days. So you have to go directly on Samsung's website and download the file and put it onto your USB. What you want to do specifically is grab the folder that says image and drag that onto the USB stick. The rest is pretty much history after that. If you can't figure out how to do that after that explanation and you need more help, I do have a video that I detailed the process in on one of my firmware update videos and I'll link that in the description. All right, so let's move on to the tests. The number one thing I tested first was the dimming bug I talked about in the last video update for 1403 that I said this update added a dimming bug. So did they fix this dimming bug? Well. I'm disappointed to say that they did not fix this dimming bug. And I also encountered another weird issue with the dimming bug, something I really didn't notice before. Now this could have been present and I just heard it because I was in a really quiet situation when I was testing it, but it happened to be one of the weirdest things I've experienced with this TV thus far. And this is the issue that I said is new. This has never happened before or at least I've never noticed it before. When the TV actually did dim from the dimming bug, I started hearing a slight buzzing noise. It was actually pretty audible and I've never heard it before. It was very concerning and I thought something was wrong with my TV at first. I went back and I tested it and I could not replicate the issue for nothing. And this has only happened once. And there's also some other weird things that have been happening with Xbox Series X. Prior to the update, I mentioned that when you switched out of game mode and into movie mode and you tried to go back into the game, it would take your game out of HDR. This is specifically happening on the Xbox Series X and I don't know if it's a Series X issue or a Samsung issue. Before it was an easy fix, I just put it to auto on game mode and it would go back to HDR after I switched out of the game. But now, it seems to be not working at all. I can't get it to switch back into HDR. I actually have to physically turn off my Xbox and then load the game again. It's a very annoying occurrence because I was testing HDR uh, games at the time and I was making sure that I had to be in HDR for these comparisons. I was comparing movie mode to game mode, but every time I switched out of game mode, it took me out of HDR and I had to restart. So that was a very, very annoying bug that I encountered. Like I said, I don't know if that's a Series X thing or a Samsung thing, but prior to this update, it wasn't that extreme. All right, moving on to the second issue we tested, inverse ghosting. I personally haven't had to deal with inverse ghosting issues since June. Thankfully, they fixed that. And I'm happy to report that there is no inverse ghosting issues on my set with this update. Other users, however, they are still experiencing inverse ghosting. This is really unfortunate and quite frankly, it's unacceptable. If you're listening to this Samsung, we really need to get this taken care of. These users have had inverse ghosting for a long, long time and it's really 
not cool to have them suffer from such a bad issue that they shouldn't have to deal with, especially when they want to game. So as far as I know, the only fix for inverse ghosting still remains the Game Motion Plus solution. You have to be in 60 hertz to use this you can't use vrr and then you want to click on game motion plus that should fix your inverse ghosting issues if you're dealing with that one last thing i want to add about inverse ghosting and the whole thing around it is us had this fixed in june so what is really taking so long and what is with the issue with the scan lines I've heard multiple people talk about this scan lines problem and I haven't seen it myself and really I haven't been able to replicate it and a lot of other users I've spoken to haven't been able to replicate it either. It's just really the people that are dealing with the scan line issues is very unfortunate and I really can't tell you what's going on around that issue. You know, to be honest, there's a lot of picture quality issues people deal with that I can't replicate myself or I can't say that my set has. But that doesn't mean that they're not there. I do realize that something is going on with these TVs and panel variants could very well be a cause of that issue and really region could be as well. All right, this next scene, I wanted to check if VRR was performing any differently than it was before the update. And I'm here to report, for me personally, I didn't see any huge differences. I actually don't notice a huge drop off in picture quality from VRR on to VRR off in game mode. It's all around the same sort of image. And let me know what you guys think of the footage because I want to see if I'm missing anything, please point it out to me. Um, but I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing a whole lot there. On the topic of picture quality, I have a before and after shot here of before the update and after the update. And I want to tell you that something changed here, but I'm not noticing anything. Specifically, I made sure to toggle through all the dimming settings and I kept it on local dimming high to see if anything changed with the local dimming high algorithm. And from looking at these two comparison shots, I'm not seeing a whole lot of difference with the actual video being displayed so it leads me to believe that there hasn't been too many actual changes to the local dimming algorithm on this update that said there could be something that i'm missing here so if you guys have seen any improvements please let me know your experiences in the comments because that would be very helpful now, the next thing I tested out was game mode to see if any picture quality differences arose there. And from what I'm seeing, it's still the same picture quality. So, like I said, I wasn't having issues on my set before the update. And after the update, I'm not having any picture quality issues either. But nothing changed. I'm not noticing any improvements. With the last update, I noticed a couple of different changes with the picture quality right away. Um, and with the update before that, I could tell you that HGIG made a real big impact. In the video update before that, they fixed inverse ghosting and they added filmmaker mode, which was significant changes. With 1460, I would love to tell you what they added, um, but I didn't see anything. So... I know that's sort of a flat thing to say in a video about a firmware update, but I have to be completely honest with you guys. There is not a huge change here for me. And remember, I wasn't dealing with any issues previously, but from what I'm reading on the forums, not too many fixes across the board for anybody else. This could change, however, for other people. Um, go ahead and let me know your experiences in the comments if you are updating because I really do want to find out if I missed anything or if I missed any new bugs that are happening or if I missed any fixes that happened. I want to know all of those things. All right, well, that kind of wraps it up. Let's hope that Samsung can fix these bugs that we're dealing with still to this day. We have to get some fixes for Europe. Like this has to be driven home. Like Samsung, if you're listening, please fix inverse ghosting for Europe and other regions. We really don't want them to experience this. It's inverse ghosting is not fun to deal with. I've dealt with it for a few months and even that almost drove me really wild. So 
hopefully they get their fix soon. Hopefully the dimming bug gets fixed. There's no excuse for that. Hopefully there is some improvements and what the heck is going on with that new buzzing? Anybody else dealing with that? Or am I just, is it something that was present and I just missed it? That's certainly possible. Please let me know. And stay tuned for more videos. There is going to be a ton of content on this channel, especially leading into January with the new announcements of the new TVs. I know you guys want to see all of that. So make sure you hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss that. A lot more gameplay videos. Got the LG C10 video coming soon as well. If you guys did enjoy this video, I have other videos for you to watch up here in the corner. And those will be some detailed videos on the Q90T as well. So I hope you guys do enjoy those. Thank you for watching again and have a good day.